Thank you very much, uh, Avelita, for the introduction. Um, so I will dive into the evolving perspectives in improving cleft lip, and I will give a, a short introduction into the nature of cleft lip and palate to see then the traditional surgical concepts, then also the challenges we are facing with these traditional concepts so that we can understand why new perspectives are important for this kind of care and an outlook into the future. A cleft lip and palate has always been with mankind. So it's for over 300 years now, even here in Basel, that care is given to patients. What is the problem? At around the sixth week of embryology, our lip needs to fuse. If this not happens, a cleft will evolve. And in a second time frame, around the 12th week, it's important that the palate is closing. And if this does not happen, again, it stays open, while all the other development can be normal. And now if the child is born, it looks like this. So the nostril is open, the nose, and you see directly into the nose because there is a connection between mouth and nose. And we have to come to the other picture where the patient is treated. It can be sometimes only subtle and affect the lip, but sometimes it's really the full range on both sides affecting the child, having a large opening in the mouth, which is challenging for the treatment. So the malformation involves soft tissue, but also the bone. There is an opening in the bone from the mouth into the nose. And then on the back, it also involves the soft palate. Now we need to have for a normal function, a total separation between the nasal cavity and the mouth. And it's only the soft palate during speech that regulates in a very sophisticated manner, how much of the air should go through the mouth and how much through the nose. So, on the palatal roof, everything needs to be closed. Otherwise, function cannot be normal. But beyond the function, it's very crucial that this separation is complete and correct for the growth. Because growth in humans depends on normal form and function and the correct interplay between these two entities. So that is the main goal of the treatment to get normal form and function early on in life to assure normal development. Now, this opening between the mouth and nose is variable big, but it is the biggest size here in the area where the bone is. Why is it variable? Because there's a variable amount of tissue deficit, distortion, and also displacement of the bony segments. And it is mainly the tongue pressure that is responsible for the distortion and displacement of the bony parts. Now, because the child evolves early on with this cleft, uh, equilibrium starts to be there and a stable situation. So if nothing change, it will remain the same. There is no spontaneous tendency that this grows together. And you can see how the tongue is sitting in the cleft. Now, what is the traditional approach to this malformation? And still today, worldwide, the most frequently used treatment approach. Usually it starts with a surgery, with a lip surgery early on. But this lip surgery is mainly intended 
to mold the bone behind the lip. So to get this opening into the nose narrower, because then the second step of the surgery is easier to do and safer. Tissues are shifted largely from the side to the midline, but that creates an open wound on the donor side that creates again scar. And we know that every scarring is also detrimental for growth in all three dimensions. And large tissue shift has another problem. It increases the risk of incomplete healing because vascularization is less if you, if you shift a lot and also tension on your sutures are higher and there is a risk of incomplete healing. So these are challenges we are facing in our daily practice. But beyond this, there are challenges to the field of cleft care itself. What are these challenges? Often we face the problem of incomplete data when we want to go back and study it. Also, incomplete data about the intervention that has been exactly done or the outcome. What is the exact form and function? Then there are many non-standardized different interventions, limited numbers of patients, all these factors are making troubles for research and to, and to evolve towards objective outcomes and next level procedures. So the exact interplay between the malformation, the intervention and the outcome often remains in the dark. Because of that, we think about new perspectives for cleft care in general. And the starting point for that is because of limited data changing the way of data acquisition. We need to more about the exact malformation. We started this with intraoral scanning that gives us a full overview of the malformation. However, this is expensive. So the consequences to use a smartphone allowing for calculating the three-dimensional nature of the malformation. So having objective measurements of the area is mandatory to understand correctly the malformation and delineate the next level of procedures for these patients. So when we can use a smartphone, measuring exactly the areas, comparing them to normals, we get a better understanding of the malformation and how our intervention interferes with the malformation. Also, at the moment we do the intervention, but also over time as the child is growing and clearly connecting the two blue lines in a surgery is easier than connecting the yellow lines. We also have the perspective of not starting immediately with a surgery, but realigning the form and function before surgery. Now, as you understand that the tongue is the pacemaker for the form, it gives us at hand the possibility to interfere with that and to take the tongue out. So we have a new function and the form will follow this changed function. And this is what we do when we give a plate to the patient, simple acrylic plate and adhesive, dental adhesive can be used for that. And you will see how much the morphology change immediately just because the tongue is not anymore interfering with the bony parts. 
So by consequence of that, it comes down to about four to five millimeters, which is much easier than to close in a surgery. However, doing such a plate can be cumbersome. And this is why we move towards an automated and standardized version of doing these plates. For this, we are using an algorithm that has been developed by our colleagues at ETH that automatically designs the plate based on the 3D input that is given to the algorithm. After that, it can be printed. So also the labor intensive handmade fabrication is taken out of the workflow. After that, it allows us to think about new ways of surgical treatment because the cleft is narrowing down in the first month so dramatically. Now coming back again, key is that the surgery needs to focus on a complete separation of the oral and nasal cavity. This is challenging when you do multi-step surgeries or if you have closed the lip because going behind the lip for closing is sometimes very challenging. So what we are able to do now is making a full closure of the entire malformation in one surgery without any interruption, what is called a continuous circle of closure in two layers. One thing is the plate and the other one is also that you're able to design your incision differently than with classical surgical interventions as you are used to do it when you do it in a stepwise procedure. So your vomerai mucosa is used at the same time for nasal and oral closure. And that allows you to economize the tissue so that you are not forced to make large tissue shift. No additional incision is used beside the one in the midline where you have to close the cleft. Minimal invasive surgery directly translate into a benefit for the patient with shorter hospital stay and quicker intake, oral intake, which is also a benefit. Because it's standardized, it is consistently the same and usable, no matter how wide the cleft appears at birth. So this is not depending on the first uh, it's not depending on the width of the cleft at birth because the plate consistently brings the parts together. What is the outlook? So it's not only about designing a plate. It's about using the patient data in a meaningful manner for the next generation of patients. So to come into an ecosystem of objective data to use for the best of the treatment of these patients. Plate fabrication is one part, but also surgical planning is now possible to predict the outcome where you want to go, but also to critically ask yourself whether you achieve it or not, so the outcome rating to know directly what you achieve. Growth prediction is now at our fingertips to understand the natural growth and how our intervention interferes with that. And the 3D data allows us also in the future for virtual training and augmented reality. This is only possible in a strong network with partners in other parts of the world who joined thankfully in this project and in the future. And now it's important to see 
how this can be translated on the spot, like here, example with our colleagues at GSR in Hyderabad, where also they can print now these automatically designed plates for the benefit of the patient. And their perception is also a big benefit for oral intake. So here you can see that smartphone has already started to be used for the benefit of this workflow and the printing is in place there. And because it is standardized and just follows the natural biology, the outcome you get there is exactly the same as we see it here. So the cleft is narrowing down before surgery and finally also allows there the surgeon to close if uh, possible, probably in one step, if the patient allows for that. So reducing also the surgical burden. So it's teamwork in a network for the next generation of treatment. And it is possible thanks to the good cooperation with DTH and the funding of the Botner Research Center for Child Health. The publications are free online available on our research homepage. So uh, you can have a look there for more details, but also don't hesitate to contact us at any time personally by mail. We are happy to join and connect with everybody around the world. Thank you very much.